Patreon.com slash the walkoff podcast. Uh, $4 a month gets you in there. Who's impressed with Addison Barger? Uh, I, for one, am, but maybe not in the way most people are. Garth, I'm interested on, on your idea on this. Obviously, he homered in day one. He hit a double yesterday. I've He's come to spring training jacked. Like, whatever Santiago Espinal ate last offseason, Addison Barger was eating this offseason. The kid looks huge and fast. Does not He's not a big, slow, bulky guy. When he hit that double today, he exploded out of the box, and he is looking hungry. So I don't know if he actually has it or not to, to stick with the big, lab, big league club or not, but he wants it, and I'm encouraged by that. All right. You're looking at a 24-year-old lefty hitter who can play pretty much every position except catcher. The guy has elite sprint speed. He's super fast, super, like, just quick twitch stuff. Like, just the way he reacts to balls off the bat, the way he feels, like, if he can hit, like, just a little bit, like, you know, if he can hit 240 with – you know, 20 to 25 home run power, like over a full season. Like he is, he looks like another Dalton Varsha. You know, he's a super athletic, built like a tank, super fast. Like what is there not to like about this kid? Like he, the last two games, like, a you know, small sample size, I get it. But he does not look intimidated. He looks comfortable in the box. He has that like nice hide, like, leg lift when he's hitting like that you know Bo kind of had like he uh you know like a Bryce Harper type swing like it looks like it shouldn't work but obviously it does for him you know like not not everybody's swing has to be identical like some things work for other guys and whatever Barger does for his timing like with that leg kick or leg lift like he looks like a dude and I think if he keeps playing the way he has he will make the opening day roster like you can't keep him off why would you keep him off like why (laughs) would i I, I just find it crazy that people are saying like if he rakes in spring training send him back down to triple the toronto blue jays are in win now mode they're not in fucking develop prospects in triple a let them rot in triple a mode do you think like i that's my biggest pet peeve that's my biggest pet peeve that's my biggest yeah. pet peeve. It's like let's just set, let's make him go in AAA. We'll call him up in May. Why? Let's see what he has. A okay. year of control. Okay. Service time manipulation is the I, big reason. I'm no. I'm not worried about Addison Barger being a three hundred million dollar guy necessarily. Yeah. If he is, amazing. Something has gone right. If we're if we have an Addison Barger three hundred million dollar contract problem, I'm thrilled with that news. So I'm not worried about service time manipulation. The concern, I guess, why would you send him back to AAA is that he needs game reps, right? Like, yeah. you don't want to make in the club just to sit on the bench. That being said, I think I'd rather see him as our platoon second baseman fill in oh, in, the, in the outfield. Johnny, you know where I'm going with this. Jen, you know where I'm going with this. Addison Barger should have Kevin Biggio's job if this keeps up. If this is the way that the spring, I mean, we still have a few weeks to go here. But I'd be fine if that's that's the role that he's taking. And I think that would be honestly probably good for the team after the offseason we had. Or maybe a guy like Kevin Biggio to not just be handed a job and be like, yeah, it's yours. If you're healthy, you're the guy. You're our utility guy. Like if Addison Barger can play that- everywhere defensively. <laughs> Lefty you mentioned bat. Kevin Biggio and my phone lit up for some reason. Like yeah. my phone responded. That's, yeah, that sounds that's about right. Look, and I'm a, I'm actually a Kevin Biggio guy, but he played good today. Maybe I'm a Kevin Biggio apologist. Maybe that's a better term for it. A lot okay? of but one thing I really like about one thing I really like about Addison Barger is that this is a kid who has gone through some struggles in the minor leagues. This is a kid who hasn't had an easy pathway to where he is right now. There hasn't been that hype behind the kid, right? And I mean, even as early as last year, he was playing in Vancouver in A ball, right? He has made the transition to double A and made the transition to triple A. And the to see how meticulous he is with his conditioning and 
Adam, you kind of touched on it, just his, his, his sprint speed out of the box when he hit that double today. It's exciting to see, man. And I, I go watch I really, that highlight all day long. Absolutely. And so I'm kind of, I'm kind of with Johnny there is that, yeah, like make the team out of, out of spring training. If, if he's, if he's putting up the hits, like he has the first couple games here, let's do it. Especially with, and I know we're going to get into this, but especially with Matt Chapman being the most sought after free agent at third base uh, next year with Manny Machado locking up, like the Jays need a third baseman. So it sure be nice to see what we have. Did you hear, did you hear Buck Martinez today? He said that he thinks that Addison Barger might have the strongest infield arm in baseball. Yeah, yeah, which is so impressive. So before I mean, like, like, everyone can get their it's Buck Martinez, talk, I but yeah. Really <laughs> I just want to but, say really uh, quickly here, Taco Time has jumped in here and he's he's donated five bucks to the channel. So I just want to acknowledge that and say thank right, you. Thank you, Taco, uh, Taco Time. Time has written uh, uh, long toss, long toss, long toss. Uh, bring on the regular season. So thank you, Taco Time. Sorry everybody for interrupting. Right, just want to do acknowledge. Johnny, you want to <laughs> jump in here? I could see yeah, you jumping at the So bit. to piggyback what's what someone in the chat said, like with the Mickey Moniak situation, this is completely different. Like Scott, what Scott said, Mickey Moniak was a first overall pick, was the guy in high school, 200 scouts watching him every single game. Everyone in North America knew who Mickey Moniak was when he was in high school. Addison Barger is a sixth round draft selection who's had struggles, who was never like that guy coming up with the Jays, like everyone was like, holy shit, when he was in A, like he's a top prospect. He's a guy who's just in my, like, just to compare, he's like just a blue collar guy who happens to be good at baseball. This is completely different than a guy like Mickey Moniak or other stuff or other situations where a first overall draft pick have struggled. Like Addison Barger has probably during his life been a guy where he's had to come off the bench in certain situations or a guy where he's not been the main the main attraction on every single team he's played on. This is a guy who can adapt to stuff like that. This isn't a Mickey Moniak who has never been on a bench in his entire life and is expected to come off the bench for the Philadelphia Phillies. So I think it just makes a little bit of a difference just looking at the personality and the character of a guy when you're comparing like a, uh, someone having to come off the bench or stuff like that. I think Addison Barger is the perfect guy for that, in my opinion, just based off of his personality. I love it. Uh, I mean, tough to just hand the reins over to him, but, uh, you know, with what we've seen so far, but great year in AAA last year, uh, so far looks good in spring training. I mean, he's not, he's not going to be get, he's not going to be given the everyday second baseman job anyways, but if it's the Kevin Biggio role, if it's the platoon at second base and left field, when the inevitable bad tacos happen like he's gonna get lots of at bats look how much Ray Tapia got last year so I'm not really worried about Addison Barger needs to stay in AAA so that he can get game wrapped I think that's the thing that I'm still I'm gonna land on here yeah John said something that I've said all along which is that this is the window in which to win right the window is closing if you consider having Vlad and Bo as being part of that core right they, they've, they've, they've got last year. I know they made the playoffs, but that is one of the most disappointing ends to a season I've ever witnessed in my life. Um, you know, missing the playoffs by a game the season before, like they, they, they gotta, they gotta, they gotta make, make strides this season, right? They absolutely have to. So the key is to put the best field or the best team on the field that you possibly can going out of spring training. Right. So if that happens to be Barger, then that's who it is. But you've got Whit Merrifield, you've got Santiago Espinal, like you've got a number of guys. So it's also, what are we doing with all of them? And I think that's one thing to keep in mind is we're two games in to right. spring training here. So obviously, if Barger can continue to dominate like he has, there, there may be a spot for him, especially with the fact that he's so versatile in the outfield and can play so many positions. But there's lots of other options. And I mean, really, if you look at this 26 man roster, I would say almost maybe 24 are guaranteed, but I might even argue 25 are guaranteed. Like there's not a lot of spots up for grab right now. So my, we'll see what happens. My bet is that he barger, barger or barger, barger. barger. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know until okay. Buck says it out loud. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know why that tripped me up. 
Um, you know, my bet is that he does start the season in AAA. That would be my guess. I think that they're mm-hmm. going to want him to put in a little bit more time, get a little, get a few more reps. Um, but you know, it is only two games, but it's good to see a young kid coming so far, make the most of it. 